Hello dear students, welcome to the class on fixed dose combinations. In this class, let's learn about two fixed dose combination. Those are clavulinic acid and amoxicillin and second is sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim which is also called as co-trimoxazole. So coming to the first FDC that is clavulinic acid and amoxicillin. So the dose of amoxicillin is 250 milligram and clavulinic acid is 125 milligram. These are available in the form of tablets. It is also available in the dosage of 500 milligram of amoxicillin and 125 milligram of clavulinic acid. So clavulinic acid is derived from streptomyces clavulinigerus, which contains beta lactamrin with or only weak antibacterial activity so main mechanism of of action of clavulinic acid is they inhibits beta lactamase enzyme which are produced by both gram positive as well as gram negative bacteria clavulinic acid it is also called as progressive inhibitor because it inhibits the beta lactamase activity in the reversible manner at the initial stages but it binds to the beta lactamase enzyme with the covalent bond in the later stages thereby it causes inhibition of the beta lactamase activity so this inhibition of beta lactamase enzyme will be increased with respect to time and it is also called as suicide inhibitors. Coming to amoxicillin, which belongs to extended spectrum penicillin, which are classified under amino penicillins. So basically, what is the mechanism of action of penicillins? All the beta lactam antibiotics will interfere with the synthesis of bacterial cell wall. How? By inhibiting the transpeptidase activity which is required for cross-linking of the peptides. So coming to the indication of clavulinic acid and amoxicillin, they are useful in the treatment of mixed bacterial infections. So what is the rationale or justification for combining these two ingredients? So amoxicillin is inactivated by beta lactamase whereas clavulinic acid is a beta lactamase inhibitor thereby it enhances the activity of amoxicillin therefore it restores the sensitivity of amoxicillin against beta lactamase producing bacteria. So what are those beta lactamase producing bacteria? Example Staphylococci, E. coli, Proteus, Klebsiella, H. influenza, Neisseria gonorrhea and bacteroids. So coming to the advantage of this combination, this combination is useful for empirical therapy in the treatment of skin and soft tissue infections as well as intra-abdominal and gynecological sepsis in the treatment of urinary or biliary as well as respiratory tract infections especially which are hospital acquired infections. It is also helpful in the treatment of gonorrhea. It, second advantage being it increases the duration of action of amoxicillin. It reduces the risk of development of resistant to amoxicillin. So what are the disadvantage or limitations of this combination? So this combination is not effective against enterobacter pseudomonas and methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus infections. So it has got poor GI tolerance especially in case of children's. It is mainly due to the amoxicillin. This combination can cause candida stomatitis and rarely it can also lead to the development of rashes. Coming to the second FDC that is sulfamethoxazol and trimethoprim which is also called as co-trimoxazole. 
So they are indicated mainly in the treatment of bacterial infections. So what is the rationale or justification for combining these two drugs? Sulfamethoxazole basically they inhibit the folate synthesis whereas trimethoprim will inhibit dihydrofolate reductase which are required for converting folate to tetrahydrofolate. Thus this combination provides a sequential blockade. Remember the example for drug which is producing sequential blockade in bacteria will be sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim. So example one example for sequential blockade will be cotrimoxazole. So it provides good synergism both of these two drugs will increase the synergetic activity and both these drugs are bacteriostatic in nature this is very important so when these two drugs are given alone they act through bacteriostatic action individually but when it is combined together they are bactericidal in nature so combination will provide a wide spectrum of antibacterial activity and there is a less chance of development of resistance to this combination. So coming to the advantage of this combination, sulfamethoxazole was selected for combining with trimethoprim mainly because of both of these drugs have nearly same of life that is around 10 hours so these two drugs provides optimal synergistic activity against most of the organisms when they are administered in the concentration of sulfamethoxazole 20 is to trimethoprim 1 so the minimum inhibitory concentration of each component may be reduced by 3 to 6 times when this concentration ratio of these two drugs are maintained and also it is employed empirically in the treatment of acute urinary tract infection without any bacteriological data because majority of the urinary pathogens are of chlamydia trochomatis and also it is useful in the prophylaxis of recurrent cystitis in women as well as in case of catheterized patients cotrimoxazole is having special valuable for the treatment of chronic as well as recurrent cases of prostatitis because this trimethoprim will get concentrated in the prostate. The reason being due to relative acidic pH of the prostatic fluid, the trimethoprim penetrates the prostate wall and get concentrated in the prostate. So what are the disadvantages of this two combination? So it should not be remember it should not be used in the treatment of UTI during pregnancy. If you remember these trimethoprim acts by inhibiting the folate synthesis. So they are the anti-folate agent which can cause teratogenic risk in pregnancy if they are used. And also there is a high chance of causing neonatal hemolysis as well as methemoglobinemia when they are given near term. Patients with renal disease may develop uremia in such case dose has to be reduced and it has a history of producing high incidence of fever, rash and bone marrow hypoplasia especially among AIDS patients with pneumocystis gyrovesi infection. And also in case of elderly individuals, it can 
greatly increase the risk of bone marrow toxicity bone marrow toxicity and also when diuretics are used along with cotrimoxazole they have produced a higher incidence of thrombocytopenia so these are the two fdc's thank you